Solomon Disobeys from 1 Kings chapter 11. King Solomon had been king of Israel for many years now. He was the richest and wisest man in the world. People came from all over just to listen to him talk. But he had a problem. He loved royal weddings. Wait, isn't that a really good thing? No, it's a problem when you've had 700 royal weddings. Yes, King Solomon loved many women. He married 700 of them. 1 Kings chapter 11 verses 1 through 2 tells us what God had said about marrying these women. But King Solomon loved many strange women. Together with the daughter of Pharaoh, women of the Moabites, Ammonites, Edomites, Zidonians, and Hittites, of the nations concerning which the Lord said unto the children of Israel, Ye shall not go into them. Neither shall they come in unto you, for surely they will turn away your heart after their gods. Solomon clave unto these in love. So God had warned his people in Exodus chapter 34 not to go into these people, not to marry with them. But Solomon clave unto these in love. Did you get that last statement? It seems Solomon didn't really heed what God had said about this. Maybe the wisest man ever thought he knew better than God. Because Solomon clave or held fast unto these in love. These women that didn't believe in God. But when he built the temple for the one true God in Jerusalem, he said he would hold fast to him in love. Besides the wives... He had 300 concubines. So 1,000 women lived in Solomon's palace who did not follow the one true God. As Solomon got older, he gave in more and more to his wives. They all worshipped the false gods of the countries they came from. Solomon built places of worship for their false gods. On a hilltop east of Jerusalem, he had places built to worship his wife's horrible false gods. You could probably see the temple from those high places. Oh, how sad. They turned Solomon's heart. The Bible says he no longer went fully after the Lord. 1 Kings 11 verse 9 tells us how God responded to what he saw Solomon doing. The Bible says, and the Lord was angry with Solomon because his heart was turned from the Lord God of Israel, which had appeared unto him twice. God had come twice and talked with him. No other little G God had done that. But letting Solomon's wives have their way and worship their false gods seemed to make everyone happy, except for the one person who should matter most. The one true God. God told Solomon, For as much as this is done of thee, and thou hast not kept my covenant and my statutes, which I have commanded thee, I will surely rend the kingdom from thee, and will give it to thy servant. Rend means to tear it away. God was saying, I'm going to take the kingdom away from you, and I'm going to give it to your servant. Notwithstanding in thy days, I will not do it for David thy father's sake, but I will rend it out of the hand of thy son. Howbeit I will not rend away all the kingdom, but will give one tribe to thy son for my David's servant's sake and for Jerusalem's sake, which I have chosen. In other words, since this is your attitude, and since you have not kept our agreement or obeyed me, I will certainly tear the kingdom away from you. I will give it to one of your workers. But for David's sake, I won't do this now. I will take it from your son, but I will leave him with one family group beside your own. For David's sake and for Jerusalem's sake, I choose this city as mine. Woo! So why was God tearing the kingdom away from him? because his wives turned his heart away from the Lord.
Now Solomon had a young man working for him whom he liked a lot. His name was Jeroboam. He saw how well Jeroboam worked, and so he gave Jeroboam an important job taking care of many of the king's projects. One day Jeroboam was walking out of the city when a prophet named Ahijah began walking with him. There was no one else around as they walked away from the city. So Jeroboam's walking with this prophet. 1 Kings 11, 30-31 tells us what Ahijah did. Jeroboam was wearing a new garment. And Ahijah caught the new garment which was on him and rent it in 12 pieces. He grabbed Jeroboam's garment and tore it into 12 pieces. And he said to Jeroboam, Take thee ten pieces, for thus saith the Lord, the God of Israel, Behold, I will rend the kingdom out of the hand of Solomon, and will give ten tribes to thee. So how many pieces did Ahijah give Jeroboam? He gave him ten pieces, saying God was going to give him ten tribes. Wow, Jeroboam must have been amazed. Ahijah went on to explain why God was doing this, how Solomon had stopped following and loving God only. He told Jeroboam more about how and when God would give him ten of the clans or tribes of Israel to rule. He went on, God says, You will be king over Israel. If you do what I command you and do what is right, as David did, then I will be with you. I will build a family of rulers from you as enduring as what I promised David. I will humble David's family because of this sin, but not forever. Now even though this meeting between Jeroboam and Ahijah happened out where no one else could hear, Solomon found out about it because it wasn't long before Solomon was trying to kill Jeroboam. So Jeroboam left and he hid in Egypt until he heard that Solomon had died. The Bible says, And Solomon slept with his fathers and was buried in the city of David his father, and Rehoboam his son reigned in his stead. What a sad story! God loved Solomon and was glad for the temple Solomon built. Solomon the world's wisest man loved God, but he loved his wives a little too much. Eventually, he chose to join them in believing that other gods were worthy of his worship. The wisest man lost the kingdom God had given to his father David. What a sad, sad story. And in this illustration, you can see how the kingdom was divided. Jeroboam had the ten tribes in the north, and it was called Israel. Then Solomon's son, Rehoboam, had two tribes in the south, and it was called Judah. And here's our verse today. Exodus 20, verse 3. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Exodus 20, verse 3. Let's say it together. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Exodus 20, verse 3. We probably won't be tempted to worship statues or false gods, but we might think that being popular or doing things our own way is more important than following God. And we might let other things have the first place in our lives, like our Game Boy or cars or our home or things that we have. But God is the only one worthy of being number one and having first place. Becoming a member of God's family and talking to God, showing your love for Him each day, these are all great ways to show how important God is to you. So, what is it? Become a member of God's family. Accept Jesus as your Savior. Talk to God and show your love for Him each day. These are great ways to show how important God is to you. And here's our big idea. No one but God is worthy of our trust and worship. Let's think about our Bible account today. Solomon loved God, but he loved his wives more. 
He began to trust their gods instead of loving and trusting God only. When he stopped trusting God only, he lost his kingdom. But Jesus was faithful. His faithfulness gained him a kingdom that will never be lost. Setting his full faith on God, proving it by obeying even to death. Remember Jesus died on the cross. He now offers to fill us, his own children, with the faith we need to worship the one true God and no one else. So remember our big idea. No one but God is worthy of our trust and worship. And our verse today, Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for our Bible lesson, and we come to you in the name of Jesus. Father, we pray that you will help us, fill us with faith. Help us to always love you the most and not start loving other things more than God. Fill us with faith, fill us with grace, and help us to be close to you. In Jesus' name, amen. King David's reign had come to an end, and Israel was ready for a new king. God told the priest Zadok, and the prophet Nathan to go to David's son Solomon and anoint him king over all Israel. Solomon was very happy to be king. After he was crowned, he went to worship the Lord. He offered hundreds of sacrifices to show God how much he loved him. That night, as the exhausted King Solomon fell into a deep sleep, he had a dream. God gave him a message in the dream. Solomon, whatever you want, I'll give it to you, God said. God wanted to bless King Solomon because God knew that the people of Israel needed a good king that loved the Lord. Solomon thought about the dream and knew exactly what to ask God. He did not need any more money or possessions. Instead, as the leader of a great people, he needed wisdom. God answered his prayer, and Solomon became the wisest man in the world. In addition to making him wise, God also made him very rich and honorable. Solomon's first great job was to build the new temple. This temple was one of the most beautiful and expensive buildings in the world. Solomon ordered precious wood, valuable stone, much gold, silver, and fine cloth. The new temple would be a marvel of beauty because it was the house of God. Seven years later, when the temple was finally finished, everyone in Israel came to the celebration. They offered thousands of sacrifices, prayed long prayers, and sang many songs. God was very happy and filled the temple with the light of His glory. The people praised God with all their hearts. But something sad happened to Solomon. Solomon was so rich and could have anything his heart desired, what he desired more than anything else was wives. So Solomon got them, hundreds of them. He had 1,000 women that he treated as his wives. Solomon disobeyed God, as God said that a king should only have one wife. These new wives came from all over the world. They did not know the one true God and worshipped false idols. They turned Solomon's heart away from God and soon Solomon started praying to these false gods as well. Disobedience became prevalent, and soon God's blessing on Solomon would be revoked. God punished Solomon and told him that his kingdom would be split in two. After Solomon's reign, his son would be rejected by the people of Israel. As wise as Solomon was, his wisdom, riches, and women brought him destruction and God rejected him as king.